Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio. Reporting from the basement of the Dairy Civic Center, this is CM Alexander with the news. It's summer vacation season. With this year's big move to Colorado, we recommend heading back to visit your old home. Remember all your fondest memories, like your first kiss, when your friends died, when your parents died, when literally everyone you know died. Just like that old saying goes, Home is where your loved one's decomposing bodies lie unburied. You're listening to Dairy Public Radio. This is Dairy Public Radio. Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio, a bi-weekly Stephen King Book Club podcast. I'm one of your hosts, CM Alexander. Alongside Joshua Khan. Hey, everybody. And Benjamin Graham. Hey, Constant Readers. And today we are back with another episode of The Sit, where we react to and discuss the latest episode of The Stand. And we have Josh leading our discussion. And not only are we doing this again, but we are doing it for the last time. Which is so confusing. (laughs) (laughs) I thought there was one more. Something. So I, I lied to you. I thought I lied to you when I said there was nine. They posted that there were 10 episodes on something, and then I lied to you again. But now, for real, this is the end. The The circle closes, as it were, which is the name of this episode. I showed up late to uh, to record while I'm recording remotely. But uh, I, I'm a little late to record because I had to finish watching this episode. Because I tried watching it before going to bed, and the first 20 minutes literally put me to sleep (laughs) (laughs) this okay this final episode something i want to get into towards the end of this episode so i'll save it but i'm gonna talk about the pace of this episode for right now let's just suffice to say the pace is pretty slow we open back up with franny being the head of boulder i guess the babies come did you guys think they were gonna maybe kill the baby it crossed my mind. I knew something was going to be different. I'm like, whoa, because they were talking about the baby's neck swelling. So we know in the book, the baby gets Captain Trips, but it has to fight through that immunity. And it made me really sad, even though I don't like babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it took me a second to remember that that happened in the book. I was like, oh, wait, no, this is fine. No, the big change that I was on the lookout for and inexplicably actually thought was about to happen at one time was for the rock to show up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Never did. Nope, it was just Stu and Tom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Franny, her voiceover is talking about leaving things in order. Nobody's going west to find out what happened to everybody or what the lights in the sky were. And they're having this memorial, and she sets down the Polaroid that exactly what I told you guys was going to happen <laughs> as soon as the photo was taken. She places that photo in the memorial, and then all of a sudden you hear Kojak bark, and Tom Cullen wearing the greatest outfit in the history of the world, (laughs) and Stu running in to hug Franny. How did you guys feel losing all of the Stu-Tom stuff? Before I get into that, because I don't feel great about that, I did, I was really touched by that reunion between Stu and Franny. Because we haven't gotten a lot between them since this is such a short series. And I did really feel that emotional connection in this scene. I thought they both did a really great job. I I wish we had the Stu and Tom and Nick stuff. I would have tolerated, and I'm using like quotes around that because I would have loved it, another episode just to give us that journey. Yeah, um, the, the stuff with Tom and Nick's ghost helping him save Stu would have been so much more interesting and entertaining than most of what we got in this episode. I did not care for this episode guys. <laughs> so that footage was shot. They did <gasps> that. Really? What? Yeah. Uh, apparently people were uh, tweeting the actor who plays Tom, whose name I'm forgetting right now, uh, people have been sending him questions on Twitter and he's been responding. <laughs> and one of them was about 
uh, the one that we shared on our social media was asking if when he calls Nick the Nickster after learning his name was improvised or not. And it was 100% improvised. <laughs> nice. And I love it. But then somebody asked about this stuff and he said, yeah, we shot it. I'm not sure why it's not here. But I think it goes back to, I mean, they dropped the stuff with the kid. They uh, had things in planned. retrospect. Oh, thank goodness. Yes, right. <laughs> yep. No Manson. No, thank you. But they uh, they dropped all, a lot of stuff that they had intended to have. So I wonder if that's why we got the conflicting. It's nine episodes. It's ten episodes. There's an oh. episode worth of stuff just out there. So we were right and wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we get that weird, the weird shot of the debris of Vegas. And I did love that the smiley face button had the X eyes and then burst into a smile. That made me giggle. That was cool. Yes. Of all the stuff that I did like in this episode, strangely enough, it is all the flag <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the flag is suddenly flag in this episode. Yeah. They they actually let Alexander Skarsgård do goofy flag shit. And I love that. See, I wonder, uh, this is pure speculation, but I'm wondering if it's partially because how free flag is at this point in his existence <laughs> like he was running a whole small country basically and now he's just he gets to relax he really gets to get back to his roots you know we jump forward in time to the the scene we all love in the book where franny's got a franny and say this place <laughs> is great but i miss maine that's the part i thought they were going to change I didn't think really? that they were going to make that journey back. I I wasn't sure what was going to happen in its place, but yeah. So I, I was surprised at that point. I'm like, oh, I guess I don't know what this episode is going to be about. Do you guys remember if in the book, I feel like the conversation about going back to Maine between the two of them, one was not just a one-sided Franny, I want this. Like Stu pitched in in this conversation about, you know, the now the... The security people have guns. The mm -hmm. there are three people in jail, like just showing that society is getting back to that uh, normal, normal frenzy. Yeah. Uh, and I don't I don't remember that being such a well thought out argument in the book. I don't, I, I don't know that it was all like dialogue in the book. I don't remember because there is a lot in the book. There's a lot more in the book about like there's that one guy who kind of takes a, the there's a new committee that gets nominated and there's like this one guy that's weirdly authoritarian and all about cops. And yes, shit. that's right. OK, I do remember that. But I have a follow up question. How do you leave Tom that's how so, do you ever leave Tom? I was yelling, Ben, you weren't with us. I was yelling at the screen, take Tom with you. What? Tom needs people. He's social. Uh, that's true. He's too social to be with just like two guy, two people and a baby. Two guys and a baby. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be three guys and a baby. Yeah. No, I, I get why Tom doesn't come with them. Obviously, he the community. But I, I don't know if I could leave Tom behind. Nope. I think selfishly, I'd have to stay. <laughs> selfishly, I would have just taken him with me. We'll find more people for time. <laughs> uh, we cut to them taking back roads to drive to Maine. We pass through Nebraska, which means nothing in this series because Mother Abigail was never in Nebraska. <laughs> right? That's uh, See, that drove me crazy. Because I was like, they they do the thing where they stop off at this this little farmhouse surrounded by corn and i'm like this means nothing yeah it's an easter the, egg it's mother abigail's house it's an easter egg don't you just it's not an don't easter you egg just you don't know things. what an easter egg is <laughs> somebody explain to cm what an easter egg is <laughs> well now this is the point of the story where we talked about it uh, a few times stephen king wrote a different ending this is the ending he originally really wanted and I think we talked about it in uh, when we covered the book that we kind of wished they'd stayed at Mother Abigail's place. And so from this point on, we see pieces of what we read in the book just kind of mixed around and told in, I think, a better way, personally. OK, this is going to be weird because I do like this ending better. I think it's really great. It's there were a lot of very tense moments in it that I didn't get before. My only issue is that I really did miss 
the episode that they're not showing us, apparently. And so to move forward through this episode, I really have to set that aside and just do my best to ignore that and not blame the final episode on missing that. I agree that there are parts of this that are better conclusion, I guess. I I enjoy having the final battle between Flag and Mother Abigail not being the the big show off in Vegas, but a much smaller, more intimate battle here with Franny. Yes, because Franny... In that big finale, everybody leaves but Franny. Franny is the last person to take a stand. Oh, God. Can you say that five (laughs) more times? (laughs) Um, I've never rolled my eyes harder than every single time they said the word stand (laughs) in this fucking episode. Drove me insane. But anyway, so like I, I, I liked that part, but the other addition to this episode that seemed completely unnecessary and weird and didn't fit. I don't know how I feel about uh, the, that. The mother Abigail child, child form of mother Abigail. But she's not, she's, is she? Yeah. I think again, I think this is cutting room floor stuff. I think there must, they must have planned to do at least some, little bit of flashback of mother abigail and i bet if they would have done it that little girl would have been who played mother abigail because i mean she shows up she knows fran and Stu's name uh, she has the power of the white behind her and after she solves everything she's gone mm-hmm. okay here's the problem all of that would be very cool i i like that but also she's living in a tent in the corn <laughs> But I don't if, think that I don't think that's real. Then why show? <laughs> and why when she shows up when Kojak senses her in the corn, give her scary music thing? <laughs> and she's living in a tent. Okay, if if this were just she shows up, Franny gets touched by an angel, and then she disappears. That's a really fucking cool ending. She's literally a weird little girl living in the corn. Why? Again, I think I think this is the this is a problem of editing and cutting room floor. I mean, who knows if maybe we would have seen in a Mother Abigail flashback this little girl in a similar tent looking up at the stars or something. Would have loved that. Yeah. I, and I I feel like that's where we're where we miss that. That's mm-hmm. one of those times where it was a real bad choice to leave something on the editing room floor. But what I do love is Stu goes into town. Franny discovers a well and she like, she's standing over these creaky wood boards and you're just like, Oh fuck Stephen King. All I kept thinking is Stephen King wanted this ending and Stephen King likes to end things tragically. Yeah. He likes, (laughs) he likes wells. Yes. And has no idea how they're designed. Also that. Uh, Why the fuck is the spout of this well in, in the, the fucking center. middle of the well? An above ground well with the spout in the middle. But I love that. I did not expect flags flag to whisper in her ear all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And then a rat bites down on her. She flails and falls through the well, falling to the bottom to a, what could have been her death. And then we jump into the afterlife, uh, another another world. Think it a wet dream. <laughs> oh god. All right. <laughs> Lord. So this is this is something else we we talked about at the end of the book when this is flag with that tribe that doesn't speak uh, any other language. And we hypothesize this is a different world. Mhm. And we know that with Stephen King, sometimes when you die, you pop into another world. So I think this almost backs up that theory we talked about. Oh, yeah, for sure. Which I think is really cool. Yeah. And yeah, Franny shows up. You know what, Sam? I'm going to let you explain this scene. Oh, thank you. uh, Because I just can't wait to hear it from how you're going to tell it. All right. So Franny has a tumble down the well. And she wakes up. 
and she's in this lush, beautiful rainforest. And as if things could not improve anymore, there is a man lounging against a tree with his shirt unbuttoned, just basking in the warmth of this forest, <laughs> waiting for her. <laughs> And it's Alexander Skarsgård. And all he wants, so it's very upsetting to me, all he <laughs> wants <laughs> of is. is to kiss her. He And this is actually a really cool scene. Let me be serious for a moment. He shows mm. her an image of herself in the well, and he explains what all of her injuries are and that her baby is all by herself on the porch and he shows her Stu who's changing a tire of the biggest truck in the world that looks like it's going to fall on him at any moment and he's basically tempting her and kind of making this threat like hey I can I can help you and I can help Stu and your baby will be fine or you can die and he can die and who knows what'll happen to your baby all I want from you is a kiss and you know maybe once in a while I'll just get a peek through your eyes see how things are going just a little light possession. Yeah. Between friends. And she's like, no, I'm not into that. And then he he kind of turns on the charm a little harder and he's like getting super close to her. And there it's like this really tense, beautiful moment where they're about to kiss. And for some reason, she bites him instead. <laughs> bites him hard. Yeah. Uh, not cool, Franny. <laughs> Which, but I also think that counts as a kiss. Just because you bit him <laughs> afterwards doesn't make it not a kiss. That's true. That is something I thought. I was like, what? as I understand it, Ben, you pay extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is the. And then she, like, she ye- yells, "Get thee behind me, you fucking bastard!" Which I have an <laughs> amendment to. And what is that amendment? Get thee behind me, you sexy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> A very different statement. There's <laughs> a, a very different intent behind See, that. See, if yeah. I was Franny, I'd be like, oh, flag, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but she runs off, and then suddenly she's in the cornfield, and she comes out, Mother Abigail's singing and playing her guitar. I liked this. At, at the house that's not hers. It, <laughs> it's okay. And But I, I really, I'm so happy. I was so shocked we got this scene, and I was really happy to see and Mother Abigail again. Following such a tense scene with the well and then her um, resisting flag, I thought this was really comforting and a really nice moment between them. Especially since, specifically in the book, we didn't really get a lot of nice moments with Franny and Mother Abigail. It was sort of this tension between them. They were at odds. And so for her to comfort her and tell her, you're going to have like way too many more kids. And they're <laughs> going to have kids. You're going to basically be the mother of repopulation going on to that (laughs) yeah which is great that's what humanity needs she's a bunch more frannies running around (laughs) franny stew combos but she says something to the effect of i I didn't write the whole thing down they're gonna have five kids those five kids are gonna have like 30 kids and then those 30 kids are gonna have 70 grandkids 70 kids and she'll live long enough to see some of those 70. Who are their kids fucking? <laughs> I, you want to take that again? <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that's like, it's. It, I mean, it's the classic Adam and Eve problem. <laughs> At a certain point, you're banging a cousin. Maybe that's what's wrong with all of us. No. No. <laughs> Well, they're gonna they're gonna head back to Boulder eventually. Like there That's, are other okay. people. That's true. Yeah, I don't think everyone was primarily in Boulder and Vegas. There were people who never made it to either, who never chose and were part of this epic battle between good and evil. Sure. And yeah, I, there are angel girls living in the corn. <laughs> children, children of the corn. Yes. It's a very, yes. very yeah. Stephen King moment. <laughs> but I guess it. it they don't say we're going to go back to Maine and stay here forever. So I guess that's that's a very good Yeah, because our kids got to fuck. Because our kids got to fuck. <laughs> Mother Abigail said our kids getting laid. <laughs> Jeez, move on. <laughs> uh, so uh, after Mother Abigail basically congratulates her for not falling to temptation, she comes, uh, she comes back to from a rude awakening at the bottom of the well with Stu grabbing her. Ooh, because like a fucking idiot. That was, yes, I mean, dude, okay, move her faster. What else are you going to do? Yeah, there's no. 
you just suffered a major fall injury. Let me roughly move your back and neck as much as I can. I I love man, I love James Marston. He's so great. Because he has this moment where he he gets the we he gets the spare tire on, he drives back, he sees Kojak. <laughs> Uh, there's that Lassie moment he's where singing. they go. He's you get a he's... moment where James Marsden is like, I can sing real good. <laughs> and I'm going to go for it. But he, the way he runs around the side of the building and he notices every, like he's taking stock of everything he sees and he looks and he sees the little girl holding his baby. And the look on his face is no shit him <laughs> saying, I don't have time to unpack this and run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I just love that expression so much. I was like, I will get to what's happening here, but I have to get in this well. Props to him for pulling that off. Yeah. Too. That's so great. That could have looked way too silly. Yeah. And I thought it was great. But uh, with the help of daughter Abigail, I guess. We're going to, she lowers him into the well. He scoops up Franny, pulls her out, and then there's magic healing. This little girl just moves her hand in. Watching that hip pop back into place was gross. The injuries in this show are pretty brutal. Yeah. Did you laugh, Ben? (sighs) No, I just (laughs) thought it was corny. No pun intended. (laughs) It was just like... I, I get what they're going for, but also it's so anticlimactic. It's like, oh, it's God came, I guess. But and it healed her. It it tracks though because we've seen that overt display of power with Flag. We never really see mm-hmm. that with Mother Abigail, but in this universe, it's not unreasonable that we would see that. I guess that that's kind of how I justified that moment. That wasn't what I anticipated. <laughs> I think that it, does make sense. Uh, having this this random un, unnamed character who we've never seen before being the uh, opposite of Flag, the main villain of the entire series. Well, I think <laughs> I think I see it more as we we see these characters. Okay, God's a dick, <laughs> and he <laughs> yeah he puts people <laughs> through the worst thing possible to test their faith. And this is that moment, like having to break her whole body, basically, Mm -hmm. to put her in the weakest position to give that offer that Flag gives her the maximum temptation and she resists. So I feel like the healing is the it is part of that. This is the ultimate reward for standing up to this final major temptation. And that's kind of like feeling it as a reward and not just a magic healing makes more sense to me. You've said uh, you said it again. Now you just have to say stand four more. Times. <laughs> <laughs> so we. Uh, oh, my God. Th- this moment, I have to break it down. Oh, yeah. Real quick. But the healing, she, they drag Fran out of the well and I'm yelling at my computer. Saying, Don't move (laughs) injuries spinal column what are you doing and uh Stu uh drags her broken back across the well's cobblestone Mm -hmm. sides yep and they get her up and this this little girl runs her hands over her body and you see her bones cracking men like you said and then (laughs) this little girl says okay now sit up friends like i don't think i can she's all bloody i don't think i can you can and she sits up and so poignantly so meaningfully this little girl leans right into her ear and goes now stand and i i wanted to throw my fucking computer (laughs) across the room (laughs) you look me in the face right now and you tell me that is not Stephen King. (laughs) That is such a perfect (laughs) example of Stephen King writing something being like, I fucking got you. (laughs) It is so fucking lame. Considering they already (laughs) said it this episode. If they had not already been the second time, because when she sees Mother Abigail, she quotes what I'm pretty sure is a phony Bible verse that (laughs) says, the God told Job, the only command is be true, stand. That 
they're that's definitely not in the Bible. That's nothing. They the, the fact that they say it two more times. So lame. <laughs> it's so lame, guys. <laughs> We get a flash one week later. We're in Maine. Franny and Stu are sitting out looking at the ocean, talking about having more babies. All right, that's the end of their story. But then we get to the amazing finale scene with Flag. <laughs> they show just boots walking up. And I swear to God, I was like, if this is Trash Can Man somehow... I, I thought it was for a second, <laughs> so too. Did I. Yeah. It was very trashy. The way he's walking in this mm-hmm. weird, like, gate, I was like, how? What? <laughs> Why is Ezra Miller here now? <laughs> but then we see his butt, and it's like, oh, no, that's Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I'd know that butt anywhere. <laughs> and he's got his hands up, and he's he's, try- he's talking to these tribe people that we saw earlier. One of them shoots an arrow, he catches it, and then he finger guns and makes the guy's skull explode. It is. Okay, that was cool because that finger gun explosion was a neat effect. And it was on the heels of him being real goofy. And singing, why can't we be friends? (laughs) Yeah, I I did love this part. It's uh, to save the whole episode. I wish there would have been more goofy flag. I'm sorry, who, Ben? Oh, Oh, shit. What is his name? Russell Faraday. Russell Faraday, that's right. Our our good old RF floating <laughs> and being real unsubtle. Can I lodge, okay, my only real complaint about this scene, which is otherwise really awesome and perfect. They fall to their knees to worship him because he's just shown this power. <laughs> and, it, okay, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. So Are you he, sure? It, okay. It's going to sound like it is, but it's not. So he starts to float in the air And we get this image, you know, him kind of in the background and some people kneeling before him in the foreground and he's screaming, worship me. And okay, it's kind of what you think, because there's a dude in the way and we can't see full (laughs) Alexander Skarsgård, which goes, no, 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 hold on. This speaks to a bigger issue. (laughs) Women, (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Give us more dick in stuff, okay? I know they look goofy, but women are nude all the time. Oh, come on, fair play. I just watched the new, well, not so new now, but Watchmen series. Lots of dick in there in the final few episodes. Thank you. Why can't we do this here? Yeah. Oddly enough, I'm behind that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. What dicks are always used for comedic purposes. Very true. Show up. If you have you watched the Righteous Gemstones? So much dick. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, but uh, if hey, Alexander Skarsgård that's... guests on an episode, see him, I'll watch it. <laughs> now, uh, before we before we rate this, going to give it an overall rating and put this miniseries to bed. I have an important question because we've discussed the that the pace of this episode literally put Ben to sleep once. <laughs> and literally literally <laughs> and i and, and i agree that the pace is not great and uh having recorded this a few days since the episode came out a lot of posts on the internet have been people complaining about this finale episode so i want to ask the two of you what are your feelings in regards to a season finale versus a series finale because that is we got a series finale because that is it this is a, a limited run series mm-hmm. And without, uh, I'll turn it over to you after this. I think one of the problems is that, especially in this binge culture of TV shows and stuff we have now, season finales are always, you end on this giant bang, whereas a series a series finale is about wrapping things up. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to get your guys' thoughts on that. I agree completely with that because... There are so many shows that are ongoing and we know they're ongoing. And after the end of one season, you you build something up, but also you are are laying the groundwork for continuing a a really cool theme or story that's going to be the focus of the second season. But when you know that it's just going to be a limited series, there are only going to be a few episodes and that's all we get. Wrapping it up with a big, big bang isn't going to have the same impact because that's more of a cliffhanger thing. 
And for a series finale, we need closure and calm. And I mean, there is no, oh, I I wonder what they're going to do next. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. We have to resolve it. And I think resolving is, you're right, in this binge culture, it's less exciting. We're all kind of used to nothing being resolved to the point where sometimes I should have resolved it a lot sooner. (laughs) Lost. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, I do agree with ending things as a good thing sometimes. But I also, I don't think that that's always true, that a C- series finale has to be a definitive wrap-up. Um, I'm going to use an example that CM brought up earlier just a few minutes ago. Watchmen. Watchmen was a limited-run series. We got one season. That's it. And it not uh, to avoid any spoilers, I won't go into it, but it does not end on a tidy, here's what happens, that's the end. It ends on a, a cliffhanger. I am I, furious. I, like that. I am so furious. I didn't know they weren't doing more. And I have just been so oh. excited. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, that's the end. That's the end of the show. <sighs> uh, I, I enjoy a I show. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. And I don't mind. Uh, some questions, things for you to think about at the end. I don't mind either ending. I just, I'm not going to fault the show for wrapping it up without leaving us hanging. Yeah. I I think this episode, because it's the stand needs a, needed that slower paced ending. (laughs) All right, let's, let's go around and rate the series overall final thoughts on CBS All Access is the stand. Uh, ben, would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, I might as well, because <laughs> I am definitely going to give it the lowest score. Um, <laughs> I just know that. It's fine. It's a CBS drama show that was on the internet, so there could be boobs and swearing. <laughs> as far as adaptations go, there were things I liked, but it obviously would have benefited from being an ongoing series. It, it, I think this deserved at least two, if not three seasons. And it would have been way better if it had been an HBO show. It's It, it was fine. I don't really have that much to say. Uh, I honestly think it will get forgotten uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it doesn't have anything that special about it to catch you know the zeitgeist it's fine three out of five blue chambray shirts oh man i hate to say this i'm worried ben made some really excellent points (laughs) like sincerely a solid argument and i i can't disagree however no freaking surprise at all i enjoyed this series so much i had a lot of fun watching it part of that is because i'm watching it with you guys and we get to talk about it And we get to interact with our fans who are watching it right along with us. And I think that they did a lot of really cool things in this that I appreciate. My my biggest complaint is just that we missed that uh, one long lost episode. Maybe if we complain loud enough, they'll release it. Who knows? Otherwise, I I did actually enjoy this miniseries more than the original. And well, yeah, the original was bad. <laughs> I am going to give this five out of five blue chambray shirts. I would watch again happily. First of all, I love this series way more than the original miniseries, and it blows my mind. I mean, it actually it doesn't shock me that much when I see people online talking about this is the worst. I'll it'll never replace the '94 miniseries. And then uh, their profile picture is them in a car with aviators or a landscape. (laughs) I get, all right. I get it. No no change is good. But (laughs) I, I, guys, this made me like Glenn Bateman. I cannot stress (laughs) the power of this series. I loved Glenn Bateman. (laughs) I I liked the the changes to some of the characters. I, I liked that they mixed up the uh, races and genders a little mm-hmm. bit more, made it a, a lot more inclusive. 
I love the representation. Uh, like this Tom Cullen, I just want to hug all the time. <laughs> uh, every time I see Cujo, I just want to pet him and say he's the goodest boy. Ooh. <laughs> or Cujo! Ah, damn it. Kojak. Big Steve. My bad. <laughs> every time I see Big Steve, I want to pet Cujo him. needs love, too. Cujo needs love, too. Uh, I just, I found every character so endearing. Even some of these characters that we only got for one episode, the your your J.K. Simmons, for instance, mm-hmm. like every character. I oh, my felt, God, I forgot J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> I just I feel like all of these characters really made an impact mm-hmm. and it was so much fun. And I I will for sure be watching this again. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go home and probably make my wife watch this final episode with me because she's been watching them with me all along, too. Uh, so I'm going to give uh, the CBS All Access stand five out of five blue chambray shirts. That is it for this episode of Dairy Public Radio. As always, thank you for listening. For Joshua Khan and Benjamin Graham, I'm CM Alexander reminding you, be true, stand. <laughs>